Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to the weekly schlog here at Highland Cycles in Western Colorado where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff. Everything from rebuilding motors, suspension stuff, tires, whatever we talk about, lots of things. Uh, here on the channel we share slash force opinions down your throat too. That's a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> try to educate and get you guys out riding dirt bikes. Um, yeah, it's going to be an awesome day. Like I promised before, we're going to finish up this XR650L. And uh, yeah, if that sounds like fun, stick with us. Yeah! All right, if you guys remember from last week's schlog, uh, we took the intake ports uh, for the AIS off. We tapped ground off the hoses which are still down there uh, and tapped the holes and put some jb weld on them and now these things are all sealed up we're gonna put those back on the bike we're gonna take this ugly abomination off and then um fire this thing up and see how it runs all right guys so i got the xr all done um i fired it up and it actually still seemed lean on the bottom, I was like, oh, man. So I checked a bunch of other stuff, went through everything, pulled my little parts that I made for the exhaust ports back off, checked them, made sure they're sealed up. Anyway, whatever. Checked all kinds of things, ended up deleting the charcoal canister. All good stuff, uh, honestly. Um, but I got it dialed in. Unfortunately, it looks like the customer came and he took the key. <laughs> but it runs good. Uh, but I found in all my searching that the pilot jet was way off and this is it's a this bike is new to the owner it's a 2000 by the way super clean for 2000 anyway uh, it turns out that he, someone had put a 40 pilot jet in here and it actually takes a 50 um, anyway it runs great now sorry I can't start it up trust me it does run good uh, customers gonna come pick it up tonight that's why he grabbed the key so anyway there you go something to know check the pilot jet I figured it hadn't been touched turns out it had so we got that all sorted out oh by the way guys I uh, just took Maria up into the high country for the first time since I did the motor and oh my gosh this thing runs so good I feel so bad for leaving it and just not riding it for so long uh, I feel like such a bad bad um, boyfriend husband father anyway whatever I feel terrible about not riding it but oh my gosh does this bike run so so good uh make sure you check that video out uh, i'm not sure if it's going to be out before you watch this or after you watch this but it was another fishing video uh lots of high pass riding really beautiful views so anyway it's awesome all right mr sheets is over here who knows what mr sheets is doing oh spraying brake fluid everywhere the uh has anyone ever seen a brake syringe quite that big. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that thing. We're gonna see what happens when he squeezes it. Does it fly everywhere? Hey, Alec, it's Morgan. No worries. I don't need him in a hurry at all. Well, I mean, we the guy has not fully committed to doing this. I mean, I well, whatever. He's basically committed to doing it, but um, I just I gotta tell him. Sweet man. Yeah, no, no worries, dude. I get it. Let's go to Roland's. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still rolling. <laughs> this is the relationship Leandra and I have. I'm supposed to tell her what to do so that she knows what to do, but then I get yelled at. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, <laughs> How often do you have to blow Kevin up? Because I know that I've never done it. Really? Mm -mm. Who does? No, I don't know. Because <laughs> I thought he gets. No, wow. He doesn't. It's awesome. He's tough. He's just awesome. She's tough. She is tough. Bruce, thank you so much for Kevin. We appreciate this. So, uh, 30 bucks for the. So, call it 40 uh, retail. Um, so, we are currently getting a price list together for turning a TPI bike into a carbureted bike. And I, we're dangerously close to having all the parts. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Because uh, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be taking a 21 300 TPI and turning it into a carbureted 21, which is going to be a lot better. The gentleman has 100 hours on it. We took it apart, cylinder all scratched up from 
cold seasoning or whatever they do because they're so lean. Uh, probably because he doesn't warm it up right, but he's old school. So anyway, nice. whatever. <laughs> um, we're going to get a carburetor on the thing. It's going to be awesome. So make sure you subscribe, guys. I'm going to be going through the whole thing showing you how to do that. Oh. All right, guys. Next on the lift is the really, really clean, really, really sweet 175 DT from Yamaha. Uh, this lady just bought this thing, took it home, uh, and then I guess she took it out for a ride. And something happened when she was pulling back up to her house and she crashed into her garage door. So anyway, I'm not sure what she crashed into exactly, but she broke this off and she broke this. And these aren't working, I guess. And something caused all that. So, yeah. I'm excited because this is an awesome bike. It's been restored. It's not all OEM. If you look at it, it's been definitely been restored. Uh, the seat cover looks like they used an actual Yamaha seat cover, but that's been recovered. Uh, there's some other little things that sh definitely show that it's been restored, but it's awesome. Really, really cool bike. So I'm going to peel these things apart and then I'm going to dive in and see what maybe happened. S sounds like she said the clutch didn't disengage or brakes didn't. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, join me as we dig into this thing. Also, cool. Check these things out. It's got cool aftermarket shocks with the reservoir. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right, next on the lift is this 2020 KX450. Uh, we are doing a valve check and also checking the clutch. He says the clutch is slipping. Um, let's do the first quick check on that. So, uh, plenty of free play this one does have the hydraulic clutch which usually doesn't have problems um, a lot of times with cable clutches guys will tighten up the cable so tight to get that disengagement just right there uh, they cause them to slip so anyway we'll have to figure that out but uh, we're going to dive in here and check the valves here real fast also doing a quick oil change and air filter service on this tx300 if you guys watched the schlag enough you've seen this before as our good friend jerry he takes crazy good care of this thing. Um, we drain the oil out and I swear <laughs> it looks brand new every time. But uh, this is gonna be one of those bikes that, who knows, he may never sell it because it is a carbureted um, two-stroke KTM, which is becoming rare, more and more rare. And uh, you know he might never sell it. But if he does, I'm gonna try to line up and buy it because that thing is gonna be sweet no matter how many hours are on it. Oh, and look, there's Michael. Hello. <laughs> He's helping us out, uh, getting things cleaned up and helping push bikes out in the morning, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, we're going to get after this, take the seat and tank off and we'll get into that. All right, guys, we got the uh, valve cover off. This is kind of a pain in the butt, by the way, to get these <laughs> valve covers off these bikes. Uh, the way they have the um, all the wiring harness routed, you gotta unhook it from its mooring here. Uh, anyway, so. Got that off. Right now, those cams are facing the wrong direction for us to check valves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that cover off. With this tool, and I've actually had, I forget, I mentioned this, I think, on another schlog, but I had someone ask me what this is. Um, it's Motion Pro part number 08-0087. It is made for doing these things. Ah, uh, and sorry if I, that's repetitive, but I just remembered that someone asked me what tool that was, because a lot of times a flat blade screwdriver will just jack that thing up and make it look terrible. And we're going to rotate these around until they're both facing away. There we go. Just checking valves. We might need to adjust them. I kind of doubt it because I think the thing's running just fine. So we grab our feeler gauges. We've got a four and five thousandths and then a six to eight thousandths. So that should be good. And let me just show you again. I've mentioned this numerous times, but you do not have to make sure it's exactly at top dead center. Just need to make sure you're at the base circle of each uh, cam lobe. And that is close enough to check. Now, if we were gonna time the cams after undoing the ch chain and all that, we'd have to make sure it's good. But, um, all right, so now we're gonna check this first. This is actually kind of a good view. Uh, let's see, we can come in between the follower and the cam. And 
There we go. It goes in just fine. That's a four. So let's check with the five. Five fits just fine. So I don't know. I don't know why that was doing that. So the exhaust is gonna be a little harder to see. But it needs to be six to eight. Let's see. There six goes. So uh, we're good. Now I'm gonna drop it down and see if I can't get that other side checked. And hopefully those are good and then we'll be ready to rock. Come in from up here, it's a little bit funky. Actually, I don't think that four does fit on this side. It's kind of hard to get into that. It's a little bit tight, but I am feeling like that is not going to be okay. Let's see if we can get six. And all right, so I think the six goes just fine on the exhaust so we're good there so now that uh, i know the four doesn't fit i'm gonna go get a smaller one i should have a three uh thousandths see if i can get that in there and know that we're there's still some clearance it's not all the way tight um because that helps me know what shim because if it's all the way tight we have to guess what size shim to put in there if it's not if it's just a little too tight for spec then we can choose the right shim but uh um, but now knowing that, that means that I will go ahead, um, cause the five did go, but it was a little tight. Um, then, you know, we finally got it to go, but it was a little tight. So I'll probably loosen that one up too. So, uh, let me go grab the, the smaller feeler gauge and we'll check that out. All right. We got the, uh, bike now set at top dead center. Um, there's a almost the impossible line to see inside there, but um, you can see that this dot right there and this dot right there are parallel with the head surface. So that is all good. Uh, now we're going to take the cam chain tensioner loose because that's part of the deal. Um, if you just take this bolt out, it won't come loose because there's a cam inside here on the on the rod that keeps it from wanting to go back that's the nice thing about japanese cam chain tensioners they have a mechanical thing that keeps them from going backwards um, but because of that we got to take these two um, eight millimeter bolts and take those out pull the whole tension out and then we can do it all right got the cam chain tensioner out of here let me just show you what i'm talking about so there you go focus there we go you see that little cam and little notches in the thing so as it goes out that cam springs in there and keeps it from wanting to collapse it's a much better system than the stock ktm uh, that's more like what's inside of the um, dirt tricks cam chain tensioner that we put on the ktms but anyway uh, so we got that thing out of there uh, quick note <laughs> you have to loosen the clamps on the throttle body and twist this thing just a little bit that way to get that out without having to remove anyway whatever also i'd love for someone to explain to me why kawasaki uses a bolt with two like the clamp for the front of the throttle body is one size allen and the clamp for the back is another size allen love to hear the explanation of that uh, it's absolutely ridiculous like anyway <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever um, but, oh, actually, one more thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to do the old zip tie method on the uh, cam. I'm going to put this on here, which then will allow me to lift this thing up, get the cam cap off, lift this whole thing up, and I won't lose time, so I won't really have to retime it now i'm gonna check it obviously but i won't have to like retime the cams all right there we go so now because i have this zip tied i can just take this cam and lift it up and set it out of the way like that now i got these little followers like ktm style um oh by the way i did get a two in here so i just need to go down probably just one shim size on both and we should be good uh because the shim sizes are 
go by 0.05 of a millimeter um, so that should get us right in the in spec on both of them so uh, let's pull those things out and check and see what they are there we go so these Kawasaki shims it says 94 on there on the sides I'm thinking what they do is that it's like a 394 yeah no it's, excuse me 294 there we go that's nice they put them on the outside uh, so it doesn't get worn off on that middle part. That's really cool. So 294. So it's a 94, the closest size down. And when you buy kits uh, like these hot cam kits, they come in 0.05 increments. So 0.05 millimeters is more or less uh, two thousandths. It's actually 0.0. It's, it's 1.9 thousandths. Uh, and since this one is the tight one, I'm actually gonna go four thousandths down because it was tight, it was only two thousandths. So I wanna go four thousandths, that'll get me to six thousandths. So I'm gonna go down to a uh, 285. There we go, so it's 286, I'm sure it's a 285. It's just, this is probably not perfectly zeroed. It came out of the right part. So we're gonna put that in that side. All right, so this one says 05 on it, so I'm guessing it's 305. Yep, so you can see, see it reads 306 on that, I'm sure. Like I said, these are not perfect, nor are they zero perfectly. So on this one, I'm just going to go down one size. That one was off, so that was 297. There we go. Again, reading one high, but there we go. Because this one was at 4 thousandths and t a tight 5 thousandths, but pretty much you know whatever it's four so i just want to go down one size that'll get us to about six all right we got those shims back in place got the cam rocked back down into place um everything should be good now i'm going to put the cam cap back on it's over here uh, and when i do that i'm going to use a little bit of assembly lube uh it's this pro circuit stuff i think anyway whatever it's just assembly, assembly lube on the cams because as you can see, there are no bearings on this part of the cam. There's a bearing here, but not here. So we want to make sure that's nice and lubed. It's not dry for even a second um, of it running. So we'll get both cams uh, with some assembly lube. And we're going to tighten those bolts down. That is like one of the most important things to torque, guys. Uh, seven foot pounds is all you want to put on those. Um, you do much more than that, you will damage the head. It's not going to strip the bolts out. Um, I mean, obviously you can, but that's not the problem. It's going to tighten it down, remove that little bit of gap that's supposed to be there for it to ride on uh, an oil film, and then it'll smoke the cam cap and head. Anyway, it's bad. So torque those things down. Uh, then pretty much just put this thing back together, fire it up, make sure it sounds good. Uh, then we'll check the clutch. All right, guys, got everything back together. It's not all bolted down. Um, but I like to see the things going to start before I completely tighten everything down. Uh, but one couple of little quick um, ch mental checks I do. Make sure got plugs back in the motor. Uh, so we had these two. had those two plugs out. So those are back in. Cam chain tensioner in. That's a big one, guys. Uh, make sure that the, the bolt with the spring and all that's in. It's easy to forget. Uh, and if you hit that button with that out, this thing could skip time probably would skip time uh, and then the piston's gonna hit a valve bend it and then now you're buying valves and uh, anyway it's not good so um, so that's in always like like I said kind of quadruple check that one uh, valve covers down those bolts are tight that's not the end of the world if they're a little bit loose and they leak oil you can usually catch it before you give it back to the customer but um, yeah should be good I think we're all good uh, let's hit the button oh. It's good. I like that. It starts right up. I like that a lot. So now I'm going to finish bolting everything back down, put the seat on it, and then we're going to take it for a test ride and check the clutch out. Next on the lift is this uh, 2021, I think. 2020, 2021. Anyway, new-ish uh, KX250F. Um, <laughs> Watch out. Look at that. Get him. Leia, come here. Uh, uh, they had a crash 
and when they crashed, they uh, broke the focus. Focus. There we go. They cracked the hose and it leaked all its anyway, whatever. So it's got no clutchy. And while I have bled hundreds and hundreds of KTM ones, I don't think I've ever bled a new Kawasaki one because they haven't really had any problems. So <laughs> Leroy, Leroy's sad because his sister's mean to him sometimes. Sometimes they play, sometimes she's just mean. We'll get her. Anyway, uh, so we got a new line, a new lever, and I'm gonna pull this thing off and bleed it. So join me on this Odyssey because, like I said, I haven't done a um, Kawasaki one yet. All right, so we got the hose loose up there, and that's no big deal. Um, so there it is, floppy, floppy. Uh, we come down here, and the way they run this is kind of interesting. Uh, it's nice and protected, but it's back here, uh, so there's no way that bolt's gonna come out without taking the slave cylinder off. But what I did first was I broke that loose while <coughs> it was still bolted to the bike. Because if you take this off, then it's gonna be really hard to break that loose uh, while holding onto this with your hand. So now we can grab our Allen wrench. All right, now we're Allen, go here. And that is tight. Definitely Loctite it on there. All right, so you guys want to check out what that looks like. It's kind of interesting. Push rod sticking out, gasket around that. It's got this like uh, spacer right here. It's interesting. I don't know why. I don't know. Probably, I don't know. I guess it's just to allow for room for the chain and anyway, whatever. Just different from KTM, but seems legit. I think it's the Nissan part, which is Probably means it's really good. So now, take that out. Got our new one. Make sure we put the right bend on the right end. Like I said, we're gonna start this, get nice and down there snug with our fingers so that it goes on there's room but won't be able to tighten it down until we get the slave cylinder back onto the bike all right now we got to route it back up to the lever routed it's got a little keeper that'll hold it here i have i'll put that on here in a second it comes underneath here up goes through that little wire cage comes over and like that all right we're going to put some dot four we're just going to put some in right up here now what we're going to do is we're going to bleed it like a normal um you know hydraulic clutch because if you just do this if you sat here and did this you'll never get fluid down all that way so what we do is we got a syringe it's uphill, we're gonna crack this. And then we're gonna come here and we're just gonna push nice and easy. There we go. There we go. Now, come down here, we're gonna close this up. Feel our clutch. It's already acting more like a clutch. Now, what we can do is just flick it like we would at a break, get some of the little bubbles out. It's open. And we can bleed it a little bit more like a normal, uh, like a break. And you can see we're pumping fluid. Now, I'll tighten it up. There we go. Now it's feeling good. Crack this again. And we're gonna push some more back up, see if we can't get a little more air. Looks pretty good, really. Tighten that back down. That feels awesome. So, 
There you go. Bleeds just like a KTM. You really, really, really need to have a syringe to back bleed a clutch. Um, it's partially because it just makes life easy. I use it on brakes too, but also since it's a clutch and when you squeeze it, it doesn't come up hard against a hard stop like the pads of the rotor. Um, it's got that, you know, the clutch springs to push out. It's really hard to force fluid through there. Um, until you have it bled quite a bit so anyway there we go put it all back together i got a new lever for it too and this one's gonna be ready to rock all right all of you non-chain lubers so i rode in the mud last night a uh, fair amount of adobe mud i just washed the motorcycle off and now uh we're gonna leave it like this you see you know spins pretty good we're gonna leave it like that. We're not gonna lube it. We're gonna let it sit out here and dry and see how you non-lubers like that. I uh, think you're crazy not to want to lube a chain right after you wash it and you had a bunch of mud and gnarliness on it, but we'll see. I'm gonna end up lubing it afterwards, I'm sure, but uh, anyway, that's for all you non-lube guys. Uh, and for those of you who are like, well, I just put WD-40, that's still lubing it. It's not, I mean, WD-40 isn't really a lubricant. It's a water displacement, but whatever. You know what I mean. It's still applying something to it. So um, next on the lift is this 500 EXC, and uh, we are going to put a recluse in it, <laughs> and then uh, uh, chain sprockets and tires. So um, I've filmed lots of recluse and tires and chains and sprockets things but uh, I'll check in if there's anything super interesting on this this is a nice clean bike a friend of mine he doesn't ride it just a ton ton um, but yeah he gets some miles on it it's a nice bike though he's got well got an XC gear Mako 360 uh, nice endurance engineering skid plate it's definitely set up as dual sport he's got little I like this low profile blinkies um, I would ditch the front blinkies or make them low profile too if it were mine because that's the kind of stuff that breaks off. Here in Colorado, you don't have to have um, blinkers at all, uh, but I think he probably has this titled in Texas where his other house is. Um, and it came as an EXC, so it came with all the blinkers. And there's nothing wrong with blinkers. I just find that I like to break them off. Uh, <laughs> also, this mirror works it's actually probably a very good mirror and it moves and it articulates well but that is definitely going to break off i like the ram mount style ones i don't think i have i don't think i have any here right now but um i think highway dirt bikes or i forget who makes those things but anyway those things seem way better than this but uh yeah i'll check in if we find anything real interesting here. all right it's the end of the day and uh, this thing's been sitting out here. You can see, beginning to rust. Still rolls okay. But you can see there's rust right in there. There's rust, kinks. It's ridiculous. So now let's lube it and see how it spins any better. Uh, unfortunately, I think my brake rotor is bent, but it's definitely rolling. You can feel it rolling better. I'm sticking with the lube. I'm, I'm sticking with lube my chain. All right, guys, the last job for the week was this lovely, uh, I think this actually is 500, uh, for, uh, Glenn Anderson, our good friend. Uh, put new tires. He's going to try out the X31 front and rear. Um, guys, I seriously cannot recommend that thing enough. It's a phenomenal setup. Uh, but we just did those. Um, we bumped up the mooses in them. We just added wedges and we put a tube around the front and a wedge on the front. So, uh, and then oil change, air filter uh, service, and it's all good to go. So, guys, that's it. That's the end of the week, end of the schlog. Um, also, if you haven't seen it yet, I shot a little video of me building that workstation. I am now going to be editing and shooting all the stuff here at the shop because I don't know when I'm going to have an office back in my house. 
<laughs> and I got tired of doing it in my uh, uh, living room next to my kids and wife. Anyway, it was a pain in the butt. So yeah, pretty stoked about that. Um, uh, next Gospel Two Wheels will be coming from that computer. Pretty excited. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this schlog as much as I enjoyed making it. If there's any questions you have, please comment below. If you want to just tell me that you liked it, comment below. If you want to tell me you hated it, comment below. Uh, whatever you do, comment. It does make a big difference for the algorithm at YouTube and helps us out a ton. I hope you guys get out and spread the gospel with two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!